What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Rachel. I am the golden mom of two. And today we are going to be talking about CPR for your dog. As a dog owner, I want to be as prepared as I possibly can be if something ever were to arise or just if I'm at the dog park and something happens to someone else's dog, I want to be able to at least do something. With more than 50% of the US population owning at least one dog and a pet needing emergency care every 2.5 seconds, I think it's important to know. If you do not know this already, I am not a veterinary professional. I'm not a dog professional, pet professional, whatever in any sort of way, so please do not take anything that I say in any of my videos as professional advice. Now with that being understood, let's get into the video. So let's talk about pet emergencies and what CPR is. So the top three biggest pet emergencies are obstructions, trauma, and respiratory distress. With that being said, what's CPR? CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So we are going to be looking at the a, B, C's, the airway, the breathing, and the circulation. Those are the three basic principles. Now, how do you know when a pet actually needs CPR? If the pet is not breathing, if the pet does not have a pulse, this is when you will want to use CPR. CPR is used to restore the heart and ventilation function in order to get oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. This is done to prevent further decline, further damage done to the organs. Brain cell death begins after only two minutes. So the faster you can get to it, obviously the better. Now it's important to note if you did not watch the last video, what actually is normal for a dog? When we're talking about normal vitals for a dog, temperature should be somewhere between 100 and 102.5. Their pulse will depend on the size of the dog. So if the dog is a smaller dog, you're going to have anywhere from 100 to 160 beats per minute. If you have a medium to a large size dog, you're going to have somewhere between 60 to 100. And if you have a puppy, you're going to be somewhere between between 120 and 160. Respiratory should be anywhere between 10 to 30 breaths per minute. Their gums, their mucous membranes should be nice and pink, nice and moist. And it's important to note that even if the CPR is performed by a highly trained professional, that does not mean that it's always going to work but that doesn't mean you shouldn't at least try. So if you're in a situation where you think a pet might need CPR, your dog might need CPR, you want to obviously first assess the situation, assess what's going on, assess how, what kind of condition the dog is actually in. If the dog is seizing, you will want to stay clear away from them, make sure that there's nothing around them that could harm them, try to keep your hands clear from their mouth so they don't bite you unintentionally, but in this situation, there's not a whole lot you can do other than and try to keep them comfortable and time how long it goes on for. When you're approaching the animal, obviously you want to come slowly, come gentle, nice calm voice, that way you don't potentially startle them. Then once you get there, you want to check for respirations and a pulse. Are they breathing? Do they have a pulse? At this point, if they don't, this is when you're gonna to wanna to jump into your ABCs. First thing that you check, airway, your A. Does your dog have an open airway? If the answer is yes, Continue on to B. If the answer is no, check their airway for some foreign object. So in order to do this, you're gonna to want to lay your dog on either side and you're gonna to wanna to tilt their head slightly back. Once you do this, you're gonna pull their tongue out in front of their teeth and take your finger to check and see if anything is in there. If something is there, remove it. If you are not able to fish it out, pick the dog up by its hind legs in a wheelbarrow style or pick them up by their legs, period. Once you do this, go on to B, the breathing. Is the dog breathing? If the answer is yes, if they're breathing, try to get them in the most comfortable position possible and continue on to C. If they're not breathing, this is when you want to start rescue breaths. You do not want to attempt to do this on a conscious animal. When you are doing these rescue breaths, you want to take your hand and seal it around their mouth and their lips so that you're holding on to their muzzle, you're holding their mouth closed, and you're going to want to breathe forcefully into their nostrils. Once you're breathing into their nose, you should be able to see their chest rise. Rapidly give them four to five breaths in C if they start to breathe on their own. If they don't, check their airway again and make sure that there is nothing in there. If there's nothing in there, if the rescue breaths aren't working, we're gonna wanna go on to see the compressions. So in order to do this, obviously you need to know where the heart is on the dog. So the heart is located on the lower half of the chest on the left side 
below the elbow of the left leg. Performing compressions is going to produce a change in the intrathoracic pressure to aid in filling the ventricles with blood. This is going to force the blood into the atrial circulation to open up the valves of the heart. In order to give compressions, this can be very similar to humans. So in order to start compressions, ideally you wanna have the dog laying on their right side with the left side up, feet facing away from you. For a typical dog of a medium to large size, you're going to extend your hands at your elbows, cup your hands on top of one another, and compress at the point where the dog's elbow would normally meet their chest. Your elbows should be soft and locked. Just like traditional CPR, this can be very tiring. If you are performing CPR on a small dog, you're going to use a different technique. This is going to be done using a single hand and you want to make sure that their back is stabilized. So again, ideally on the right side, left side of the chest is up, their legs away from you, you're behind them, their back is stabilized, and you're going to place your hand at the point where the elbow would normally meet the chest, and the thumb will be right on top there, and then the rest of your hand will cup around the bottom. As far as depth goes, you never want to go deeper than a half of an inch. Once you start your compressions, the compression rate is ideally 100 to 100 compressions per minute. You will then give it two breaths after every 30 compressions. If you have a barrel-chested dog like a bulldog, you are going to need to do a different technique. For this animal, you will need to place them on their back and your hand placement is going to be the point of their xiphoid process. Having this type of dog with them being on their back allows for more effective cardiac compression. If you have a heel chested dog or a deep chested dog, such as a Great Dane or a Greyhound, your hand should be placed at the widest part of the thorax. Just like in humans, you want to have the Stayin' Alive song in your head and try to keep up with that rhythm. Whenever you're doing compressions, again, they can be extremely tiring, but you wanna make sure that the chest wall will recoil fully and return to normal placement before you keep continuing. Ideally, if you're not alone, you would be rotating with somebody else. And that's CPR for your dog. Not something, ideally, that I hope to gosh, none of us ever have to go through, but again, I think it's super important to know what to do if an issue with any pet that you are around does arise. Again, if you're not already subscribed, please make sure you go do that. Give this video a thumbs up if you did find it helpful. Thanks so much for being here, and as always, we will see you guys in our next video. Bye, guys.